Well, today we're going we're gonna to talk about refresh your purpose. We're still in this series, and that helps us set it up. Here's a lady that lived her life to serve the Lord, and, and I delight, I delight in it. Uh, we'll begin with some morning humor, and there was a man that came home from work one day. His wife was already making dinner in the kitchen, and he burst into the, into the room, and he says, Honey, the community center down the street is hosting a talent show. And I want to enter because there's a cash prize for first place. And she says, well, that sounds interesting, dear. Um, what are you going to do? And the man said, well, I don't know. I, I can't decide if I should do a, a, sing a song or do a, like a comedy act. And his wife said, well, is there a difference? <laughs> <laughs> This uh, refresh series, we're going to get going into that, and uh, this is what just week two or three, I guess. Um, uh, it, it, my idea is inspired by the new year, and that many people think about New Year's resolutions, making changes in the new year. Maybe last year you, you see some things you want to improve upon, or you want to do different in the year to come, and uh, and so it's an opportunity for us just to evaluate our lives and and ask. Um, how, how we are living. And I've been trying to look more at the spiritual side of some of that. And what is some of the spiritual implication of what it looks like just to refresh our lives and refocus on the things that God might be calling us to. And so today I want to talk about refresh your purpose. What is the purpose of your life? Now to set this up or to get started this morning, I'm excited to share with you a story about a 100-year-old lady by the name of Ava. And uh, we shared her story during a Christmas a shoebox time a couple years ago. And her pastor came to her and said, um, you know, would you make uh, dresses? Would you make dresses for shoebox to send to children all over the world? He asked her if she would make 180 dresses. And uh, she's 100 years. She would get up at four in the morning and start making dresses for these shoe boxes. Now, when I showed that video uh, two, three years ago, whatever that was, um, we we watched it. And then after after the service, I was having a conversation with with Diane. Diane's our piano player, and she says something like, "Pastor, don't you even think about asking me to make 180 dresses?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and uh, so I didn't. <laughs> but unbeknownst to me, she did start making some dresses. And um, this last uh, November, we were able to send the dresses that she made back with Michael over to the CEO Mission kids. And I think we have a picture. There's all the girls in their dresses. <laughs> <laughs> and they were uh, they were so excited and and uh, that simple gift um, made a it made a huge impact and the they'll be the the talk of the town now <laughs> those little girls um, when we do something to touch the world and make it a better place. When we do something just to show love, concern, help to another. When we do something to serve the Lord, it gives us purpose. It makes, um, it, it gives meaning. It, it's the reason that God um, has us still here. I just want to read a Bible story from Matthew chapter 19. It's an interesting story about a certain man who came to Jesus and he asked him, what does it take to go to heaven? It was kind of the, the question he had. And, and this guy is an important guy. He's a wealthy guy. He was a, a ruler. He's a young man. He's got a lot going for him. He lives his life well. The Bible, the story talks about him having a, a life with a, with a solid moral compass. And he lived his life the right way his whole life. He tried to, to serve God. He tried to be a good person. He um, was a devout Jew. And, 
he seems like he's got everything going for him, and even so much so that he's earned the respect of others around him watching this young man, saying, wow, here is a neat guy. Here's a great guy. It's, but yet he has this encounter with Jesus, and he comes to Jesus in, in verse 16, Matthew chapter 19, verse 16. It says, And behold, a man came up to him, saying, Teacher, what good deed must I do to have eternal life? And he said to him, Why do you ask me about what is good? There is only one who is good. If you would enter life, keep the commandments. He said to him, Which ones? And Jesus said, You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Then the young man said to him, All these I have kept. What do I still lack? And Jesus said to him, If you would be perfect, go sell all that you possess and give it to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. When the young man heard this, he went away sorrow, sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Jesus said to his disciples, Truly I say to you, only with difficulty with, will a rich man enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I tell you, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. When the disciples heard this, they were greatly astonished, saying, Who then can be saved? But Jesus looked at them and said, With man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Then Peter said in reply, See, we have left everything and followed you. What then will we have? Jesus said to them, Truly I say to you, in the new world, when the Son of Man will sit on his glorious throne, you who have followed me will also sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone who has left house or brother or sister or father or mother or children or lands for my name's sake will receive a hundredfold and will inherit eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last first. Now, I'm using this story today to talk about purpose. I want us to think about it with the lenses of purpose. Because I just find it interesting what the man's question to Jesus and then Jesus' answer back, um, that they focused really on purpose. Because the man, he's asking Jesus this question about how do I receive eternal life? And um, yet, uh, he looks at what he's earned and how he's living and what he's, what he's done. And again, here's a, a young guy. And he's already proven successful. He's already wealthy and has many possessions. He was a good Jew, a moral person. He's following the laws. He's gained the respect and admiration of his peers. And yet something is stirring within him. Something is saying, what's lacking? I'm missing something. Something still isn't right. It seems as though he's doing everything right. It seems like he's got everything in order. He's done all of it. But yet his real question is, but yet something's wrong. I can feel it. I can sense it. I know it. All, all that I'm doing, it seems like there's something missing. And Jesus' answer. He says, uh, he, of course he did say, sell everything and come and follow me. And Jesus gives him an answer really about purpose. Because we understand that Eternal life is about, it's about faith in Jesus Christ. And he tells him that he needs to come and follow him, but, but he fo is able to focus in on the source of his problem. And he knows that it's his wealth that gives him significance and identity. That's what the purpose of his life is, is getting up in the morning and making more money. The purpose of his life is the, just the, the, the honor that comes from people looking at him and they can walk around about town with his head held high and everybody being in awe of who he is. And Jesus, so he says, he, he is able to hone in right on the, on the issue and he says, if you want to enter life. And I just think that phrase is really interesting. If you want to enter life. He's really asking, how do, how do I go to heaven and how do I get eternal life? But Jesus says, if you want to enter life, you need to think about your purpose. Why you're here, what you're doing, what's important to you. What are you giving yourself over to? What an amazing statement by Jesus. If, if you want to enter life, then sell everything you have and then come and, and follow me. 
I mean, in the church, what we, we try to say, you know, uh, you know what, as Christians, why don't you give up 10%? Let's just start with that. Let's just, let's just see if you can't handle a little bit, okay? Let's just dip, dip our toe in the water and give up 10% for God. And Jesus just goes right for the jugular with this guy. Knows right where to, where to get him. And isn't it amazing? Jesus didn't really care about the money. That wasn't the point. Because Jesus say, why don't you sell everything you have and give it to my ministry? Because then I can, I can reach farther. We can do more. He says, sell it all and give it away. Give it to the poor people. Give, give it to them. Because that really isn't the point. What he's talking to him about is purpose. And so interesting, the man's decision. And, 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 the, and, the, and the reaction, he walks away. You know how, I guess a thought, one of the thoughts that was just kind of captivating me this, this week was we will work so hard and we'll give ourselves over to something that's so, that's so important to us. We will hang on to something so tightly that's actually killing us. And even when we know the answer, we can't seem to let go. We've watched that in others. You watch them just hang on to something. And it's ruining everything. It's a poison. It's a cancer. The answer, the solution, the medication, it's all there. It's all available. And yet they just still can't let go. And here this man comes with this question. Jesus gives him the answer to to. to eternal life, abundant life, a fullness of life like he could never imagine. And he says, uh, never mind. I'll just stick with the plan that I've already got going because it's working out so well. He knows his life is empty. He knows it's meaningless. He knows something's missing. But I'm just going to stay with that. Are you living a life of success or significance. And by success, I'm not saying maybe wealth. We all have things we give our heart to. Where's your time? Where's your talents? Where's your treasures? And that's the question. What do you give yourself to? What is the important thing about your life? What, what do you really hang on to? What, where do you put your efforts? I found it so interesting, the disciples' answer or, or even question, really, after they saw all this happen. Jesus says this to him, and the man walks away. And, and Jesus says, you know, without, with, with man, this is all impossible. But as they're looking at all this, what's the question in their mind? They're saying, well, if this man can't be saved, then who can? How, how can anybody be saved? I mean, he is the epitome. He, he is the example. He is the hero of their day. He's the person that everybody's looking at saying, in my life, this is what I want. This is the guy that has it all. This is the person that seems to be the greatest example that we know of and that we can look to. And if this guy can't get into heaven, then what hope do any of the rest of us have? But God measures our life with a very different measuring stick. And when we're looking at youth, and we're looking at beauty, and we're looking at fame, and we're looking at power, and we're looking at money, and we're, we're looking at resources and we're looking at all these kinds of things. Jesus looks beyond all that and says, what I want is for you to let go of the world and to follow me. To follow me.